Good morning, everyone. I will get started. I will call State of Wisconsin versus uh, Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. May I have the appearances, please? Good morning, Judge Sue Upper, Leslie Basie, and Zach Wichow appearing for the State of Wisconsin. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Please state your name for the record. I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any other facts in the charging instruments. Records should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person, in custody, in street clothing, wearing a suit and tie and a mask. For the record, uh, I do not consent to being called that name, Your Honor. All right, and we and still have yet to address subject matter jurisdiction. Um, the court has the addressed record. it for the record. So we for the will record, be, has it been proven? Um, Mr. Brooks, I stand by the written decision that I issued in this case last week. A second what copy was provided. Please don't to? interrupt me. Uh, a second copy was provided to you. I know you saw it because you tore it up yesterday. Um, so I'm not going to address it any further. Are you, you are mistaken and wrong about the law that it needs to be verified or proven. Um, are you talking about the paper I accepted in return for value? So with accepted that, value I believe, value? Mr. Brooks, I'm going to continue with this trial, whether you believe jurisdiction has been proven or not. It has not. not been proven for the record. And it has. So it has with not. that, Detective uh, Carpenter was on the stand. And it needs to be proven. And I... Per the prosecution. Would like to have him brought back up unless there's any other issues the parties wish the court to address from the state. I did want to address something briefly. Go ahead. Um, as the court knows from our short discussions yesterday, the state will be playing a couple videos of the defendants in his statements. Um, the court had previously heard those as part of a motion hearing, and I'm not sure if I'm really getting the defendant notice or what I'm doing, but I, I really tried hard. And I, I'm pulling out snippets from this because if the court recalls, there are a lot of references that the defendant makes to prior domestics with Erica, um, his prior record, things that the court had previously excluded. So I'm going through and I am um, pulling specific time um, ranges from this so that nothing that was previously ruled um, inadmissible comes in. And I guess, obviously, this defendant has the absolute right to cross-examine the witness. He has the right, and we've offered, and we have been um, putting exhibits up for him. But I do want it to be noted that I would not be willing to have Mr. Brooks just say, oh, go to about the seven-minute mark, um, because... If he even goes like two seconds before a clip that I had played or two seconds after, it could include information that was previously ruled inadmissible. And I guess what I would say to the defendant is the court has previously protected the defendant um, to make sure that things didn't come out. Where he asked a question that could be construed as opening the door and the court said, we're not gonna go there, Mr. Brooks, and he got the message. However, with this, if there's any portion of this video that's played that talks about the prior with Erica, I do consider that that he has opened the door and I will be asking the witness about it. So I guess this is maybe more so directed at Mr. Brooks that if he plays clips that um, contain that information, he will have opened the door. He's had this video for weeks at least, um, this, these videos have been subject to a motion hearing. I'm not sure exactly what access he had to them before. I've reviewed the five hour video a number of times. I've been very meticulous in my timestamps that I'm grabbing out from here. And I am unwilling to have the defendant put Miss Gussie in a spot where he's kind of well around this point. He needs to give exact times that he wants um, started and stopped because what happens is if he says, okay, can you pause here? By the time he says that, five seconds may have gone by, which may be enough to, some of these, if I would play two more seconds than what I have here, it would open the door. 
So I just want the defendant to realize that this is kind of a slippery slope here and um, he proceeds at his own risk. And I'm not going to ask Miss Gussie to stop it at a certain time because I think something's about to be said. Um, that's on the defendants. Um, and if he opens the door, I can um, assure you, I will, I will go into it. Um, so I did want to put that on the record, Judge, not to be a jerk about it, but just once it's out there, I can't not address it. And if it's the defendant who brings it out there um, into the view of the jury, then I'm going to feel compelled to address it. Um, and then I didn't know if the court wanted to go through the preliminary instruction that you had provided previously on the interpreter. My understanding is that Mr. Marquez speaks very little English. Um, if you want to add the um, added paragraph, that would be fine for the state. We've had very, I've had two discussions with him and uh, I would not say he is, um, that English is a comfortable language for him. All right, thank you. As to the first part to what the state brings up regarding the redacted recording, I would remind Mr. Brooks, the court did enter some rulings previously. Why do you have to roll your eyes at me? Let's start the morning off on a good note, I didn't sir. I roll my eyes at you, so I don't think it's fair that you should say I roll I my eyes I saw you roll you. your eyes at me, and I, I didn't roll my eyes it. at you, so don't, don't do that. Well, Mr. Brooks, I'd appreciate a little bit more respect. These I would rulings, too, Your Honor. Let me finish, because now you're interrupting me. These rulings were entered by the court um, to prevent other acts evidence from coming in. But a defendant can open the door in a variety of ways. These recordings, and I have reviewed them previously, uh, do contain uh, discussion and statements by you regarding these other acts. And as you heard from Attorney Basie, she has all of the timestamps to stop at appropriate times so that the state does not run afoul of those pretrial rulings. You can open the door by asking questions, by asking for a video to be played, um, and not knowing those exact timestamps. I think it's important that I reinforce what the state has just advised you of uh, so that when you are watching the recording as all of us will be um, if there is something you want replayed and you want to cross-examine the witness about that you know those time stamps and then the state has graciously indicated they would assist once again in replaying portions of that video i don't need a response from you unless you feel you would like to give a response yeah, to any of that um with all due respect they're the ones that want to play the video so I don't, I don't understand how I'm the one opening the door. They chose to play the video, so. They're not gonna play the entire video, though. They're going to redact out, probably stop, fast forward, the portions that this court said would, would be inadmissible. So if you, so for example, if during your cross-examination of Detective Carpenter, you ask the state to replay a portion of the video and you say go back to around the seven minute mark you have to understand that you may open the door even inadvertently to some of those other acts evidence coming in so what i'm telling you is if you want any portions replayed then or if you ask for the entire video to be played under the rule of completeness that you have an understanding that you would be opening the door to the evidence of other acts coming in. Potentially, I'll have to rule on it at that time. Um, but, so be mindful of the timestamps. I, I don't understand it, Your Honor. That, that'll be, that's almost like you making a ruling and then it, it not having any standing. If you but already party, made a the ru rulings against them, I told the state they can't offer this evidence. Right, They're that's the what I'm saying. So if you offer the evidence or ask questions that would open the door, that's a different story. 
And we all have treaded lightly when you've asked questions that would have opened the door to a variety of witnesses. So the state's just simply saying, look, we're gonna do our job. We're not gonna put in the other act's evidence. We're gonna pause the video, fast forward the appropriate spots. But if you want any portions replayed, or if you ask for the entire video to be played, uh, then you do that at your peril of having those other acts evidence come in. So that's all I wanna tell you. Um, as far as the jury instruction, uh, do you have any position on whether that second, well, I shouldn't say second, it's the very last paragraph where it says, add the following if appropriate. Do you have any position on whether the court uh, reads this entire jury instruction 60 to the jury prior to Mr. Marquez being called as a witness? Yeah, I think the jury should hear whatever need, needs that they need to hear. Do you have a position on that last paragraph specifically, sir, given the information that the state has provided today? Last paragraph. It's in brackets and it's after a bolded section that says, add the following if appropriate. I advised the parties yesterday we would be talking about that this morning. I mean, it was just stated that um, the witness doesn't speak very good English. And so that would, that would indicate that it would be a lot more work for the interpreter to make That's sure. That's not that what I'm asking about, sir. I'm asking whether you, whether you have a position on whether I include the very last paragraph of that instruction uh, to the jury. feel like that needs to be read to the jury. Um, I think it's pretty it's pretty clear from the from all the language leading up to that. Let me ask attorney Basie a question about uh, the contact the office of the district attorney has had with Mr. Marquez. Were you able to communicate at all in any way in English even if you would describe it as broken English? Yes, I think our last conversation, we probably said, um, I said something in English, he responded, and then when I said something else, I think he needed translation for that. His primary, our victim witness person, um, specialist assigned to the case, is bilingual and she speaks to him in Spanish. All right, given that a bit of information provided by the DA as an office of the court regarding his ability to answer some but not most. I think it's uh, appropriate to read the very last paragraph. Um, certainly doesn't hurt. It's not going to take away. So I will read the entirety of jury instruction 60. Obviously the part that uh, says read here if appropriate comes out uh, and then um, I will print that off and uh, that is what I will read at the appropriate time. Did that print Madam Clerk? Wait quick question on that um, how do we know exactly what words uh, the witness will be able to understand in English versus that's not how the interpretation works the questions are in English they're interpreted in Spanish to the witness the witness will answer presumably in Spanish uh, and then the witness's words will be interpreted in English and it's the English as this instruction says that is the evidence I think it's a little unfair that uh, prosecution has had conversations with the witness and I haven't considering that it's my witness they were on the state's witness list as well I believe so um, it's fair for either party to reach out and if witnesses want to talk to either party uh, in preparation that's frankly fair game so how, how would I be able to reach out to a witness? Mr. Brooks, 
you are representing yourself that uh, obviously poses some challenges and difficulties, but that is the state and stage that we are at. So with that, um, I know uh, we'll get Detective Carpenter on the stand. He can come up and be out here uh, when the jury comes out. Um, so come on up, sir. I will swear you in again, as is my practice, when there's a witness on the stand for a second more, day. I have one more thing real quick. Um, well, it needs to be other than subject matter jurisdiction, it's, so what is it? You didn't even let me get to it. I said, what is it? I said, it needs to be something other than subject matter no, jurisdiction. Can I what get is to it? it? You can say There's no way to know what I'm going to say if I can't say it. Mr. Brooks, please tell me what it is you'd like to address. I, I want to address why my um, ICFs have not been addressed, because I know you have them. Why have I not gotten copies? I've gotten copies of every other ICF. Why not the, the recent ones? Sir, I am not uh, going to be the intermediary anymore for ICFs that are directed to the uh, clerk of court regarding copies. That's not that's not explaining why um, I haven't. I'm even not the been keeper of the record. If, if so if there's something received. you want me to address, then you should address your ICF to me and not the clerk of court. Well, where is the where is the ICF? Sir, if I sent it, I should I be able not, to get a copy. I've gotten copies of every single one. You need whether to they ask were addressed, for that from the clerk. Whether of they court. were addressed to you or whether they were addressed to the clerk of courts, I've always been I'm not going to address told. that further, Mr. Brooks. I'm not going to be the intermediary when so you have the, questions to the clerk of courts. So for what's the point of me sending them? the ICF, me doing what you asked me to do, and sending them, and then not being able to know if they've even been received and get a copy of them, which I've been getting copies of them ever since. If you did not ask for a copy of the ICF, they don't have any obligation to send I addressed, it. I addressed it when I first sent it. I asked you on the record, did you receive it? Mr. Brooks, you said, I didn't receive anything because nothing has been sent to me. Well, so where's the if ICF? there's something that you need, then you should reach back out to the clerk of court. I shouldn't have to do but that we're not going to take it. up court time regarding an ICF sent to the clerk of court. Again, I will advise you once again, I did this the other day, if there's something case related it needs to be addressed to me if it has to do with the record it needs to go to the clerk of court and it was because it i was am sent not to the clerk of court the but i still uh, should be i still should be able to be told if it was received and get a copy which you've done that before every single icf and i told you so i would no it longer be doing that sir because of this very issue it so takes you say so now time. it changes so now it changes all of a sudden? No, it didn't change all of a sudden, sir, and you know that. So don't no, try to no. confuse Does the record. Does it change all of a sudden? Because no, I've been getting copies of everything I've sent, which is what you asked me this to do. This changed last week, and you it know should, that. It shouldn't change. So no, I don't that, know it. I'm bringing the jury out, and I'm not addressing this issue, So sir. I want I want We're the copy of my forward. ICS that I send. Um, send a request to the I don't have to office. send her another request. Where's the one that I just sent last week? All right, the jury is going to come out, so please be respectful. I, I will, but at the same time, you still have to, I did what you asked me to do. If you tell me to do something and I do it, and then now you're saying I, I'm not going to get a copy, which you've been providing them ever since, I, ever since you told me to do it. Mr. Brooks, the rules on that changed last week. No, no, it did not. I'm still supposed to be able to say if it's been received or not. So why should I have to send multiple ICFs to even know if they, they've been received? That's ridiculous, Your Honor. I'm going to give the parties the uh, final version of jury instruction 60, which I will be reading at the That's, appropriate time. Come on, you can't change stuff at the last minute. You no, asked Mr. me to Brooks, do something. Mr. Brooks, I did it as a courtesy, you and frankly, no, you're not courteous I'm not, to me. I'm not, so even, the I'm not even coming out. I'm not even the referring record to that. Reflect that the jury I'm, referring is to the fact, I'm referring to the fact that you All haven't right. even Mr. had Brooks, enough respect to tell me be it's been received. to the jury. They're coming out. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't uh, mean that you shouldn't be able to tell me if my ICF has been received. ICFs that you told me to submit, you told me that. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will disregard the commentary by Mr. I accept for value and return for value this document, just like you've been hiding everything from the jury that they the need to hear. The jury will disregard. The court is not hiding anything from the jury. Yeah, yeah, you are. So, yeah, you Mr. Are. Brooks, please be respectful of the jury. They're and coming you should, out. You should be respectful we of what are, you asked me to do. You are addressing issues that are not related to evidence they in are. this case. You asked me to do Mr. something, Brooks, I'll do it. Mr. Brooks, please. And right. then now it changes. Everyone can be seated. Thank you. This is ridiculous. Just like subject matter jurisdiction hasn't been proved. Just like you're making judicial determinations that you don't have to prove anything by law. <laughs> which is a tacit agreement. By you, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the, please disregard 
the statements currently Why, being it's true? made by Mr. Brooks. Why, because it's true? incorrect statements of the law. They, they prove that they're incorrect. Prove. In this case. Where's the proof? Where's the legal proof? And you need to disregard them. Because you don't have it. And we are going to continue proof. with testimony, Mr. Brooks. I warn I don't, you, do I don't, not interrupt. I don't we identify will by that name. have a discussion about whether you will continue to be here. I don't All consent right. to being called that name for the record. Detective Carpenter, please stand, as is my practice when a witness is on the stand for a second day to be sworn in again. Go ahead, Teresa. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Do you solemnly swear to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Do you solemn